we are truly living in a time of spiritual warfare and being surrounded by so-called lions that attack from every side and every angle and I like to think about King David in Psalm 35 where he talked about the Lord contending with his enemies he called upon the Lord but sometimes he felt like he didn't want the Lord to abandon him he was afraid of that sometimes and he wanted the Lord to come to his defense and to be his shield and his buckler so I'm gonna read Psalm 35 King David with God contending with his enemies so Psalm 35 contend with my opponents O Lord fight against those who fight against me take up your shield and buckler arise and come to my aid draw the spear and the javelin against my pursuers say to my soul I am your salvation may those who seek my life be disgraced and put to shame may those who plan to harm me be driven back and confounded may they be like the chaff in the wind as the angel of the Lord drives them away may their path be dark and slick as the angel of the Lord pursues for without cause they laid their net for me without reason they dug a pit for my soul may ruin befall them by surprise may the net they hid ensnare them may they fall into the hazard they created then my soul re will rejoice in the Lord and exult in his salvation all my bones will exclaim who is like you O Lord who delivers the afflicted from the aggressor the poor and the needy from the robber hostile witnesses come forward they make charges I know nothing about they repay me evil for good to the bereavement of my soul yet when they were ill I put on sackcloth I humbled myself with fasting but my prayers returned unanswered I paced about as for my friend or brother I was bowed down with grief like one mourning for his mother but when I stumbled they assembled in glee they gathered together against me assailants I did not know slandered me without ceasing like godless jesters at a feast they gnashed their teeth at me how long O Lord will you look on rescue my soul from their ravages my precious life from these lions then I will give you thanks in the great assembly I will praise you among many people let not my enemies gloat over me without cause nor those who hate me without reason wink in malice for they do not speak peace but they devise deceitful schemes against those who live quietly in the land they gape at me and say aha aha our eyes have seen O oh Lord you have seen it be not silent O oh Lord be not far from me awake and rise to my defense to my cause my God and my Lord Vindicate me by your righteousness, O Lord my God, and do not let them gloat over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Aha, just what we wanted. Let them not say, We have swallowed him up. May those who gloat in my distress be ashamed and confounded. May those who exalt themselves over me be clothed in shame and reproach. May those who favor my vindication shout for joy and gladness. May they always say, Exalted be the Lord who delights in his servant's well-being. Then my tongue will proclaim your righteousness and your praises all day long. And he did not want the Lord to leave him. And just because we have moments where we might question 
where is God in this? Or why is God allowing evil to prevail? It doesn't mean that we've lost our faith or that, you know, that we think any less of God or that we're blaming him for something that Satan's doing. We're just questioning why God is allowing the enemy to prosper in these wicked times. King David questioned these things and asked the Lord to deal with his enemies and to fight for him. And that's what we ask when we're battling these situations where people come against us and they do things against us for no reason, no cause, and King David dealt with these same issues. So Psalm 35 gives me great comfort. So now that I've read all of Psalm 35, let me just discuss a few things. In the very first paragraph, when it said these words, Contend with my opponents, O Lord. Fight against those who fight against me. Take up your shield and buckler. Arise and come to my aid. Draw the spear and the javelin against my pursuers. Say to my soul, I am your Yeshua. That's exactly what King David said. Because from the line of King David would come the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach of Nazareth. And when you read and look up the word right there where it says, Say to my soul, I am your salvation. That is the word in the Strong's Concordance, Yeshua. What's really interesting about that is it's Strong's number 3444. And 444 has always been associated with Messiah Yeshua. But if you look up, say to my soul, I am your salvation, you will actually see the word Yeshua, and it's spelled just like I spell it, Y-E-S-H-U-A, and then it has an extra H at the end. Right here you can see it, Yeshua. In my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, that you can get from olivepresspublisher.com, you will see that I talked about Messiah Yeshua being the arm of the Lord revealed. And so, what does King David talk about? He asks him to come to his aid and to fight for him. King David was prophesying about his descendant that would be the Messiah. And I would like to talk about what a buckler is because he asked him to be his shield and buckler. A buckler is a piece of the armor that's held usually in the left fist and it's like a mini shield about the size of an 11 inch pizza <laughs> to put it in a funny way but it has like a concave piece of metal and sometimes the shield was flat and it had a handle that you put your hand in a bar and that was on the back part of it so as the adversary was coming at you the you would hold the buckler out with your arm straight out and as your enemy was coming against you with a sword it would if it was made out of leather or whatever material the sword would be stuck as they you know slashed the sword around it would stick in the top of the buckler and then the person with the buckler could throw them off and have more control over what the sword was doing from their enemy. So it actually was 
just like a mini shield held in front while a shield was held to cover the body. And sometimes the buckler was strapped around the left arm so it kind of was long, elongated down the arm so that when the opponent slashed across there you could not only deflect the sword but you could deflect arrows that were coming at you from the bows from your enemy. So you used a buckler in your left hand to defend and you used a shield to cover your body to protect. And so King David asks Messiah Yeshua to come and be his buckler and shield, his defense and his protector. And here's an example. The buckler is on the left and a shield is on the right. And you can see they're both using swords, but they were also defensive against bows and arrows and other. In Psalm 18 verse 30 we see to whom is the Lord a buckler. As for God his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. So the arm of the Lord revealed is Messiah that King David prophesied about that would be his shield and his buckler and he asked him to come fight his battles for him and of course the Lord holding out his arm in defense to stop the blows of the enemy and to throw the enemy off like chaff Here's another picture of a buckler and it was only like 11 inches wide so it was very small but it deflected a lot of blows from the enemy. You know in this psalm David is actually saying I humbled myself with fasting but my prayers returned unanswered. I paced about as for my friend or brother, I was bowed down with grief like one mourning for his mother. And I sure know what that is, mourning for your mother. And I really can relate to what's happening here with King David. It's clear that King David didn't always understand what God was doing in the midst of him fighting these battles against his enemies, but he trusted in the Lord even though he had moments where he was saying come to my aid you know <laughs> where are you come to my aid I need you why is the enemy prevailing and so when we're in these similar kind of situations where we're surrounded by lions from all sides and going through struggles we shouldn't have people judging against other Christians because, you know, they're questioning these same things. They're asking God the same things of, come to my aid, come to my rescue, I need you. You know, confuse the evildoers and let them be cast out like the chaff before the angel of the Lord driving them away. And King David even asks, How long, O Lord, will you look on? So, he didn't have anybody saying, Where's your faith, David? You know, uh, are you denying God by saying that? You know, and you know, those are the kind of comments people say to other Christians that I'm just showing that King David had these same thoughts. How long are you going to look on for these evildoers doing what they're doing and please stand up and be my shield and buckler against them and confound them and go before me and protect me. And when he goes on to say, O oh Lord, you have seen it when they have 
scoffed and laughed and mocked and gaped at him. And he asked the Lord, be not silent. So there he's thinking in his mind, why are you being silent, Lord? Why aren't you answering me? You know, the very things that we think of. And <laughs> people have all kinds of judgmental attitudes about people that are in the same thought patterns that King David was. He wasn't sinning against God by saying these things. How long will you look on and be not silent, Lord? Be not far from me. Arise awake to my defense. Be my shield and buckler. Obviously, King David's enemies were gloating over his distress. And he's asking God to let them be ashamed and confounded because they're exalting themselves in their haughty spirits and he does not want God to allow them to continue in their evil. King David knew that his descendant Messiah Yeshua would come in the future and he says rescue my soul from their ravages my precious life from these lions when we're encountering all kinds of troubles and tribulations and lions gnashing their teeth at us persecuting us for no reason and when we are crying out to God be not silent where are you it doesn't mean that our faith is gone it just means that we're only human and we're doing exactly what King David did and thought. And David was a man after God's own heart. So the next time you have enemies coming against you and you're talking and crying out to God in the same manner, don't be down on yourself. Don't let other Christians say, well, where's your faith? Or why are you saying that God is doing something when it's really Satan when you're just questioning you know that God is the all-powerful God that can intervene and he can stop these evildoers and King David even questioned why are you allowing them to prevail so in this day and age when there's so much that we're having to deal with I just think we need to be understanding of other people and be kinder about our brothers and sisters and what they're thinking. It's been a really hard road and just because you are going through something as a Christian does not mean that God's abandoned you or that you've done some sin and there's sin in your life and so you haven't repented so now you're being persecuted by God and all of these things Christians say that just simply are something that person's conjuring up that may not even be the case at all and you know we are in a day and age where we're fighting these battles and we're calling out for the Lord to be our shield and buckler to stand up against the enemy and against all of their haughty spirit mocking scoffing laughing whatever you know they don't want to believe in the rapture which I think if they don't believe that, then they're not meant to go. So they'll pay the price for it. Obviously, King David was saying, O oh Lord, be not far from me. Awake and rise to my defense. So obviously, he felt that somehow. He needed to ask the Lord to not be far from him because he obviously felt like he was far from him at some point that he needed God to not leave him not forsake him which God promised he wouldn't 
but this is totally King David prophesying about Messiah Yeshua, his salvation, and that he would stand up and rescue his soul and give him eternal life. I just wanted to share this psalm today because we are obviously in spiritual warfare and great battles against these lions that we face. Um, thank you for holding on to um, watching my channel. I apologize for it being such a long time between the videos. I've been under traumatic things that I never hope to ever go through again and um, no longer have my mother's home and uh, no longer have the place I was renting because they sold it within a week or two of my mom's being taken away. I've had to deal with the trauma of all these trees that I loved and helped plant and <laughs> be cut to the ground. It's been very traumatic, including for those of you who've watched my channel, you know where my hammock was and my prayer tree and the cross that was behind me over my shoulder. It was all cut to the ground into a stump. And I can no longer see Bunnykin and my doves. Um, I'm really in a place that's not a home. I don't have a home anymore. I ask you to keep me in your prayers and please support the testimony that the Lord gave me, which is all written out in the book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, The Messiah, King of Israel, from OlivePressPublisher.com. It has the most incredible divine revelations of the Messiah. And I believe that all of these things have befallen me because the enemy is trying to destroy everything in my life and take everything away. And I am fighting a huge battle. I ask you to please keep praying for me. And also, you know, people asked me where they could donate something if they wanted to and I haven't been able to respond because my computer has been disconnected with all of these moves and things have happened in those situations that have been awful that I'm having to deal with but um, I got a post office box which is um, in place of the general delivery address that I had before if you've sent something to the general delivery it will just go to the P.O. box automatically but I'm going to give you the address which is P.O. box 246 Niwot N-I-W-O-T Colorado 80544 so that'll be the place that you can send whatever um, and I thank you uh, the people who've stuck with me that have been a great support and extremely helpful, especially in very crisis times, I just thank God for you. And um, some of you have repeatedly come back and shown love to me, and I just am so grateful. Um, some of the things helped me get my car finally back from its $3,000 repairs. It's um, a 31-year-old car, so it's about time for it to fall apart, even though it is um, a beautiful car that the Lord gave me back in 1990. So, I mean, he provided it. That's what I mean. And he gave me the desire of my heart at that time. But I'm going to have to replace my car at some point. There's some people that I was talking to and my um, 
on my mom's phone line at her house, which that phone has been disconnected. And please write to me at the P.O. Box 246 Niwot, N I W O T, Colorado 80544. And just so you know, Niwot was an Indian chief's name, and it means left hand. <laughs> It's the same hand that they held the buckler in. <laughs> so the Lord was showing me all this about the buckler, and I, I do remember that I wrote something in my book about that. But I just wanted to talk about that and how the Lord is the arm of the Lord revealed, and he holds his hand out to defend, like the buckler. And the shield and he fights this spiritual battle of the warfare that we are fighting I no longer have a home and it's very traumatic to deal with losing your mom and your home and watching all your trees get cut down and much more I could say but I just will leave it at that thank you for the loving support and for caring and please keep watching this channel because Satan is trying to stop this incredible testimony and he's done everything he can and taken everything from me and I am trying to endure and I'm trying to think of the Lord as King David did to stand up and be my defense and my protector and also when you're mourning and you're in sackcloth and ashes like I am you hang your head a lot and you look down but the Lord is the lifter of your head because we are to look up and we know that the rapture is soon to come and the Lord said he's going to take vengeance on those who know not God and do not obey his gospel so anybody that says that you know the believers are going through the tribulation does not know that scripture He's taking vengeance on those who don't even care to know him and not the believers. I actually hurt so bad in my heart that I didn't even know how to pray. I didn't know what to say. I asked Yeshua to intercede and intervene in prayer for me because I've lost so much. It's so traumatic to have so much so fast. <sighs> Gone. King David used to hang the shields and the bucklers in the armory. And they surrounded the walls. I don't know if you've ever seen in um, England they would put the armor up on the walls like displaying the swords and they would make designs out of the swords like a, a circle of swords and you know shields and they would hang them on the walls and this is what King David did and I have a lot of really neat things in my book about the armory so you'd be interested in that and anyway I just wanted to give hope to people that are facing you know just hateful situations for no reason at all and you don't deserve what's being dished out to you and you're trying to hang on and be tough and hang in there but times you just break down and you know you cry out to the Lord and that's exactly what King David did as I said so I'm not going to be chastising myself over saying you know Lord help <laughs> where are you I need you <laughs> but, 
but I just wanted to talk about King David prophesying about Yeshua being his salvation. And there it is in Psalm 35. The arm of the Lord revealed and our defense and our protector. That the fiery darts and arrows are deflected from so that the enemy cannot pierce us or get to us because we are the children of God. Deuteronomy 7 says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God, who keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him, and keep His commandments to a thousand generations, and repayeth them that hate Him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandment and the statutes and the ordinances which I command thee this day to do them. Isaiah 51 verse 9 says, Awake, awake, arm of the Lord, clothe yourself with strength. You know, and of course, awake is the word for almond, shaket. In John 12, starting in verse 37, it says, Even after Jesus had performed so many signs in their presence, they still would not believe in him. This was to fulfill the word of Isaiah the prophet, Lord, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason, they could not believe, because, as Isaiah says elsewhere, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, so they can neither see with their eyes, nor understand with their hearts, nor turn, and I would heal them. Isaiah said this because he saw Jesus' glory, Yeshua's glory and spoke about him. Isaiah saw the Messiah in his glory and spoke about him. So Messiah Yeshua actually said that he did not come to judge the world but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects the Messiah, me, he says, and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them at the last day. For I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me to say all that I have spoken. I know that his commandment leads to eternal life, so whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. There is eternal life when you repent of your sins and believe that Jesus died for your sins, the Messiah Yeshua, God manifested in the flesh to redeem us back to a state of how it was at the beginning before the curse when he sent Messiah as the second perfect Adam to redeem us back to God as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and if you put your trust and your life and belief in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, believe with all your heart, turn from your old way of life and believe and be baptized in his name and trust in him with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You will be saved because he is the only way to eternal life. It, he reversed the curse of Eden so that we could go back, eat from the tree of life, and live forever without having the curse of death upon us anymore. And time is running out to accept Messiah Yeshua as your salvation, as your Savior. So get right with Him today and trust in Him with all your heart. I hope that 
you will call upon him to be your shield and your buckler and to just call on him when you're having doubts and fears and you're going through things and traumatic experiences and that you would just call upon him and ask him to help you so I'm signing off for tonight and I hope that this lifted somebody up and thank you for your prayers Shalom.